Eyes on Longmont, offering a diversity of topics about our community that will inform and entertain you. We invite you to sit back and enjoy this edition of Eyes on Longmont. Hey guys, my name is Larry Webster. I like to whittle and I like to build flintlock rifles. You guys want to come in and take a look around and see if some of them guns? Come in. Hi, I'm Larry Webster. I was born in Salina, Kansas. We moved to Colorado when I was about seven years old. We've lived around here ever since. Uh, we've lived in this house for 45 years, and when I leave, it's going to be feet first. My hobby is building rifles and carving wood. Uh, I call it a passion. My wife says it's an obsession, but it's just something I like to do. And as long as I'm physically able, I'll be carving and working on something. I started this uh, wood carving when I was 21 years old. I saw a picture in a magazine of a rifle that had been hand carved with a, with a scene on it and basket weave carving uh, instead of checkering and I said I got to have one of them. I knew I couldn't afford to buy one so I grabbed some wood and I started whittling and carving. and. This is what it has progressed into. It's, it's a heck of a hobby. Uses up a lot of spare time. Well, this, this rifle is, uh, well, I got a lot of the rifles I used to build, uh, or I did build, I had my own style. And I had them looking at them one day and I said, you know, they all look alike. So I branched out into some other styles. I did one last year that it was uh, my tribute to Isaac Haynes, who uh, was an old gun builder. This one I'm building as a tribute to George Eister, who was a fantastic builder. He was an artisan, and uh, he'd been dead 187 years. I figured that up the other night, <laughs> but it. If you look at it and you look at a picture of a gun that George Eister built, you could, you'll be able to see the similarities. It's not a copy, but it's, but it's a copy. It's in his style instead of, and back when they were building these, they built them in Pennsylvania and they had geographical areas and generally a county in which most of the gunsmiths in that county built similar styled guns. Uh, this happens to be a York County. Uh, one of my other ones is a Lancaster County. And the ones I built before that, I called them Boulder Counties. It just was a style I liked and it, it evolved as I was building them. And it's different than any other county. But, and they call it a, they call the county the school, a school of Lancaster County. And I don't know why, and I don't know anybody else does, why all the gunsmiths in Lancaster County built guns that looked alike. And if you go over to the other county, you go up into Dauphine or somewhere, those guns look alike. Uh, I, I, I don't know why, they just happened that's the way it worked. When I started off with one of these rifles, there, the block of wood is pretty good sized. 
this was the piece I sawed off of the top, and this piece I sawed off of the butt. So you you can see what you, the general shape of how what you start with, and this is what you end up with. And the uh, so you see that or not the four inch piece up here is that big square. And you I, I use a bandsaw to, to rough shape the general shape. And from then on, the only other power tool I use is electric drill. I ordered this wood out of Virginia. There's a guy back there that supplies Strictly gun stock wood, and that's that's what he does. Is he goes around the country back there and picks up the curly maple, and uh, this is a outstanding piece of curly maple. The figure in this is just phenomenal, and it's the worst piece of wood I've ever worked on. It uh, it's hard. You can't stick a knife in it. You can't hardly chisel it because it breaks off in big chunks. So you do a little bit of knife work and then most of it's done by the file and sandpaper. It's, it's taken me twice as long or more on this than, than is normal. And I'm a long ways from being done yet. But someday. And it'll, it'll be a beautiful piece of wood when it's finished. It's the figure and it's just outstanding. I buy these pieces as cast brass that and the trigger guard. I don't have the ability to cast brass, uh, nor the desire. So the, uh, the patch box that's in the process of going in is right here and that gets another piece that goes in here like this. It's, it's called a patch box. They carry the patches. The lid comes up. It really does. And then this is cut out and hollowed out so that you have a cavity in here to store your patches in. You make the hinge. That's usually a a patch is when you load this rifle, you pour the powder down the barrel. Then you take a piece of cloth and lay it across the muzzle. And then you set the ball on top of that. And you start the ball in so that it's just level with the top of the barrel. And then you cut the fabric off. And then you load the barrel on down. That gives the a grip on the ball for the riflings and imparts a spin so that you have the increased accuracy of a rifle barrel. And if you tried to do it with just a pure lead ball, you'd have to have a hammer and you'd deform it before you ever got it to grip the riflings. And that that's, that's what gives these rifles their accuracy, is the, the riflings and the patched ball. Patch. Yeah. Uh, and they, they shoot well. They, we, uh, we shoot all kinds of things, from paper targets to anything that you can hang on a string for near. But one of, the, one of the matches we used to shoot a lot of is a playing card, and you stand it on edge and from about 20 yards, because you can't see the edge of it any farther back than that, you shoot this card and cut it in half. Now, if you get off the side a little bit, it won't cut it in half. It'll just cut a part way into it, and that, that, don't, that don't count. You've got to cut the card in half, and that's the kind of accuracy you can get with these. Split the ball on an axe blade and break two part targets with the, a half of the ball on each side, it's a lot of fun to shoot. When, when I was younger, I could do that. I don't see well enough to do it anymore. I, it just doesn't happen anymore. 
nor do I have the muscle control. But it, we've traveled with the wife and I. She shoots, and she shoots well, or did. And uh, we've traveled all over Kansas, Nebraska, Wyoming, Colorado, shooting. And in the summertime, we were gone every weekend somewhere to shoot, shooting competition. And it, it's a it's a kick. It really is. This is a, this is a shotgun I built. A double barrel, flintlock, which might be something that would be interesting. When you load it, you pour the powder in the barrel, and then you put in a, a wad, a paper hard, hard wad, and the shot, and another wad to hold it in. Then you bring it to half cock. And you put a little powder in this pan right here, and there's a hole directly into the barrel there, so that when the flint strikes the frizzing, it makes a spark. The spark flies down and hits the powder in the pan. The powder in the pan burns through the hole, and the gun goes bang. And just as an example, it's not going to do anything but make sparks. You can see the sparks, and that's and there's a, a little time delay from the time you pull the trigger until it goes bang, and you got to stay on target that length of time. But that that's the only shotgun I'll ever build. It's European walnut, uh, come out of Europe somewhere over there, I guess. And instead of putting checker, this is what I saw in the magazine when I was a kid that I wanted to learn to do, because I knew I couldn't afford to hire somebody to do it. It just, it just tripped my trigger when I saw it first time. <laughs> now to drag you nuts before you get it done. But that's, that's my shotgun. In my house there's guns in every corner. This is how you go about building one of them. This is all shaped and to the final dimension. I'm, I'm now doing the raised carving on it. This is my vice blanket because I don't like laying my arm on that cold steel. This is a half a bag of shot that you put over here so it doesn't flop up. And then you just grab your knife and start cutting. And this wood is so squirrely, you'll see the pieces I'm taking off are not very big. Because if I go bigger, a big chip flies out of it. And then you got to try to figure out how to hide that. And that's, that's actually the only difference between a good wood carver and a poor wood carver is a good wood carver knows how to hide his mistakes. This is why it's taking so long, because of the tediousness and only being able to take small slivers of wood off. I do a lot of it across the grain, but I can't right here very well because the grain is dropping I can go with the grain here because the, the it's dropping down and it's almost an end grain. But you get into these flatter areas like here, then you've got to go across the grain. And if you hear me say a naughty word, it's because a big piece just chipped out. And if you make a very bad mistake, the only thing you can do, or what I do, is I immediately put my knife down, turn the lights out, and leave.
you have to be very careful and not let it slip or you take a big chunk off of somewhere else beside it. This piece of wood will test your patience. Or if you get tired of doing that, we can roll it over and work on something else. This piece of brass here has to be inset into this wood so that the brass and the wood are level. So in order to do that, you get out your little knife I've just got this screwed on top of the wood, nothing else done. So to start with it, we come in here with a very pointed knife and go around it very carefully. Now, this brass patch box, these edges have a about a five degree taper down back cut so that as the, as the metal goes in the wood, it gets wider and wider and wider. And when it's done, you can't look down in there and see a crack if I make one. I try not to have one, but the best plans. It'll take probably right at another two months by the time I get all this carving done. And that's hard to say too how many hours a day I work on it. Some days I work 8, 10, 12 hours. If I'm into a thing that's going good and, and I'm really enjoying it, I'll be down here at 2 o'clock in the morning. Other times I quit it. After 3 or 4 hours I've had enough. I leave it. I don't, I don't have a clock to punch down here, and I'm the boss. If I don't want to work on it, I just quit. Say, that's it, that's all I'm going to do today. And some days you need to do that. Sometimes it's a take a break or make a mistake type of situation. You get about so tired, you should not be trying to do this if you're not on sharp on the game. This is a, a rifle. This is the last the rifle I built just before I started this one. It's a little 36 caliber. It's a tribute to Isaac Haynes. Isaac always put a pattern like that on his carving and like that. And that piece there and this carving here. And the patch block is similar to something he did, but it's not a copy. It's, uh, it's, it's a similar job. This is a sweet shooting little rifle, 36 caliber. Uh, it's a shorter barrel than most of them. And I built this one in last year, 2017. I date every barrel. So that nobody can say, "Oh, this is an original." It's not. It's it's a good shooting little rifle. I built I built cast off into the stock. The barrel comes straight down here, and then the stock bends a little bit, which throws the barrel more under your eye, and you don't have to lay your head over quite so far. I built this in 2012. This is the, it's a 50 caliber, it's a 42 inch barrel. Uh, this is what I used antelope hunt with. I've gotten two antelope with this rifle. 
which can sometimes be a challenge. And it's it's just a Lancaster style rifle. It's nothing, not a tribute or anything. It's just a just a uh, Lancaster County style. They have a special muzzleloader season. It uh, it falls right in the middle of archery season. The archers don't care for that, but we like it. Um, you can hunt any big game with it you want, I guess. Uh, I've never hunted elk with a muzzleloader, but deer and antelope I've taken my share. Uh, it's a different different time style of hunting. You got to sneak up on them. You only got one shot. It uh, it's satisfying if you like to hunt to to be able to take a, an animal with a flintlock rifle. It there's been a big argument recently over what caliber of muzzleloader you can use to hunt various species, and the law was that you could use a 40 caliber, but it was a confusing law because it said the bullet had to weigh 170 grains. I don't shoot a bullet, I shoot a round ball. So I got a hold of Fish and Game and questioned them about the, the projectile and they came back and said, you can use your 40 caliber with a round ball. That was last year. This, season, this year the season came out you can't use a 40 caliber for shooting animals. You can't even use a 45 caliber, which is what I'm building here. I'm going to hunt antelope with that. And I said, no, you can't use a 45 caliber anymore. It has to be a 50 caliber, which is what this is, to hunt antelope and deer, and a 54 caliber to hunt elk. And they changed the regulations. I can, hunt, I can still hunt antelope with one I've always, the one I've always hunted with. Uh, but I just, it just, I, I told them what was wrong and they, they corrected it all right. So, so I'm building a rifle now I can't hunt with. I've got a grandson now. I'd always hoped that I could pass on the love of building a rifle to one of my offspring. And I've got a grandson now that has been bitten by the bug and He's building that rifle over there. He's uh, working on this rifle. He's got a long ways to go, but he's got quite a little accomplished. And uh, I, the reason I say he's been bitten by the bug is he's at this stage in the gun. And the other day he said to me, I'm thinking about what I'm going to build next, Grandpa. So, <laughs> when when you're thinking like that, you're going to build a lot. You're going to build guns. And I have another grandson that is building a pistol, muzzle-loading pistol. And I I wouldn't be surprised that in the in the future he will take up rifle building also. He'll get the desire, which would just tickle me to no end to be able to have. Two of my grandsons, and I have a son-in-law who has also been building a rifle for about three years now. <laughs> for for thirty years, my wife badgered me to make her a set of dueling pistols, and I listened to her and listened to her and didn't pay any attention. Because I don't know how to build a box to put them in. And then one day I was thinking about it because she'd just been busting my chops again to build her a set of pistols. And I thought, you know, if you take a block of wood, a solid piece of wood, you can carve a box into the wood. So I got to thinking about it. So I, I got a big block of wood and I started carving on the, put a little carving on the top, dress it up just a little bit, and uh, 
and I've got her some pistols. And she now has a set of dueling pistols. And I'm uh, all the, just like they used to build them, with all the accessories in there, and little storage compartments for flints. And, and yes, they shoot. It's just like the shotgun or an all rifles. It's a flint lock. And they, they, they point good. They shoot good. I'm not a pistol shooter. Uh, my wife's a pistol shooter. I shot pistols just because she shot pistols and she wanted me to shoot with her. And she holds the state record on muzzleloader pistols at 25 yards. She's deadly with a pistol. But before we finish today, I'd like to share some other carvings I have done. These first two are my wife's favorites. I call them the cowboy and the lady. I carve wedding spoons for my family members when they get married. I carved these two for our 50th and 60th anniversary. My ancestor did not carve, but my great-grandfather carved this chain, and my father carved one also when he was eight years old. So I did one too. This picture is carved from a solid block of wood. Nothing is glued on. My bride talked me into entering it in the Northern Colorado Woodcarvers annual show last year. It won best of show. Okay, boys. I just looked at the clock and it's quitting time. I need a nap, but if you decide you want to build a a rifle, let me know. Come on up when we'll build another one. Thanks for coming by, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Stop by anytime and visit a while. See ya.